Howdy. So this first part is Truth Tables 1, and it's all about the truth schemas, so or truth charts, or whatever you want to call them, from 7.1. So it's before you can do truth tables, you have to understand the truth charts. That's the foundation. And so I'm just going to run through those truth charts real quick and kind of explain why they are the way they are and what they are, so you can have that foundation to actually do truth tables. You can't do truth tables without understanding this. So look at the sentence. We ate pizza and we ate queso, right? Symbolized, we could say P stands for we ate, ke we ate pizza and, right, dot, we ate queso, right? So that's a conjunction, right? I'm saying this happened and this happened. Now, let's say you come over and there are a bunch of pizza boxes everywhere and tortilla chips covered in cheese you would say, yeah, Mark definitely, definitely ate pizza, and Mark definitely ate queso. So it's true that Mark ate pizza, right? I see the pizza boxes. He didn't lie. And it's true that Mark ate queso. So if you saw both those things, you would probably say, you know what? The phrase, the entire phrase, Mark ate pizza and Mark ate queso, if it's true that this part is true, right, Mark ate pizza, and it's true that this part is true, Mark ate queso, then the phrase, Mark ate pizza and Mark ate queso, or we ate queso, whatever. That whole thing is true, right? So basically what this T says is that the P is true, we ate pizza. This T says the Q is true, we ate queso. But this T says, by putting it under this symbol, that the whole statement is true. What about if you showed up and there were a bunch of pizza boxes, right? And there was no queso, right? It turns out that, that, we didn't, that we didn't eat queso, right? It was false. Then the phrase, we ate pizza, that's true, right? As demonstrated by that T. But we ate queso, that's false. So the conjunction, we ate pizza and we ate queso, that's false because we didn't eat queso, right? That's the general pattern of what we're talking about here. Each symbol, right? The, the, the dot, the wedge, the tilde, all that, each of them have their own scheme. So looking at what that looks like, right? Here's all the symbols, going through them one at a time, right? Here's here's P and here's Q and here's all the different combinations, right? There's only four different combinations. They could both be true. They could one of them could be true and the other one could be false. This one's false. This one's true. Or they could both be false. You'll notice that that pattern repeats itself through all the symbols. So all you really have to memorize is this middle column right here, which I'm about to fill in. So if right, if you have two T's, right? If I ate pizza and I ate queso, then that's a true statement. Right? Well, if I if it's false that I ate pizza and it's false that I ate queso, then the phrase we ate pizza and we ate queso, right? That's surely false. Right? And if we ate pizza but we didn't eat queso, then the phrase we ate pizza and we didn't eat queso, right? That's false because we didn't eat queso. And right, if we had queso but we didn't have pizza, it's still false because the phrase we had pizza and we had queso, right? That's where these T's and these F's come from. So I'm going to fill them in for these different rows. It's fundamentally important that you understand why this is false and this is true. But it's also fundamentally important that you can recreate these charts or understand these charts. So when you look at a wedge and you say, okay, if I've got two T's, right, that makes the wedge true. But if I've got two F's, that makes the wedge false. But if I have a T on the left side, that makes it true. If I have a T on the right side, that makes it true even if I don't have a, a T on the left side, right? This table is really important. The notes for 7.1 are really good at explaining this, and they do it in a lot more detail, but I'm just trying to get you through the five-minute video, right? Arrow, right? Easy to remember, there's only one way to make an arrow false, and that's if you have what I call TIFF, true, false, false, right? You'll notice there's only one way to make a wedge false if you have false all the way. There's only one way to make a dot true, and that's true, true, true. So it's not a lot that you have to memorize if you can just remember those three little phrases. Only one way to make a dot true, 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 true. Only one way to make a wedge false, 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 false. Only one way to make an arrow false, tiff. And finally, double arrow equals double letters. So if you have two T's, that makes the double arrow true. If you have two F's, that makes the double arrow true. If you have a mismatch, that makes it false. And then the last one is the tilde. So if you're, if the statement we had pizza, if the statement we had pizza is true, then the statement we had 
we didn't have pizza or the tilde P, that's a false thing. If it's false that we had pizza, then saying we didn't have pizza is true, right? So those are our basic connectors. If you understand those, you can do truth tables. Please review those and also 7.1 for more details. And the next thing we'll do is start with the abbreviated truth table method.